Today, we are one day into flush, and we only have a couple more days left before chop. We are dripping with frost, and I'm excited to finish this run out. What's up everyone, welcome, welcome back. If you are new here, my name is Corey and this is Inside Hydro. Today we are back with the final update video before the harvest, we're like a couple days out from chop. We've already started flushing and we're pretty much at the end now. Uh, finally, I feel like it has been so long since we have harvested anything. We did make some room changes in between runs, which is why we have been out for so long, but I am happy that is close to being over. So let's get right and then let's get into it. Cheers, boys. The last few weeks of any grow are usually the most enjoyable in the sense that there's no more real upkeep, the training, the defaults, the real work is over and all we have to do is worry about feeding, watching and timing the harvest correctly. The end result is pretty much already set in stone by this point. I mean things can still go wrong but for the most part we're just waiting for the right time. Personally, I really like watching everything finish up. Small little improvements every day make such a huge difference over time, and I enjoy watching that. Last update, we checked the trichomes out, and they were close, but not quite there. So I did give the ladies a few more days, and then I started flushing yesterday. So we have a zero ppm feed in the system right now. I really only plan on flushing for three to four days. We are in RDWC, so we can get our flushes done faster than most mediums. Now I know some people don't like flushing, others do, and everyone has the right to their opinion. So what I'm gonna do is just tell you my stance on it and why I continue to flush. So first off, removing nutrient buildup. Flushing helps clean out excess nutrients and salts that have accumulated in the growing medium which can lead to harsh flavors and a chemical taste in the final product. Number two would be enhancing flavor and aroma. By flushing for a few days before harvest, you can improve the overall flavor and aroma of the buds, leading to a smoother smoking experience. Number three would be nutrient depletion. Flushing removes excess nutrients from the growing medium, leading the plant to deplete its stored nutrients. This can cause leaves to yellow as the plant uses up what it has left. And then lastly, chlorophyll breakdown. As the plant approaches harvest, the breakdown of chlorophyll is a natural part of its life cycle. Flushing can accelerate this process, leading to a lighter color in leaves. So. We should be chopping by day 64, which is like one day over the recommended. Honestly, I'm pretty happy with the result. I know we didn't find a real overall winner in this pack, but four out of six of them look pretty damn good. I know they're gonna be tasty. The other two out of six don't have the best structure, but they are still frosty as hell, and they look like perfect contenders for bubble hash. I have been smoking a lot of rosin recently, so I'm gonna dedicate a portion of this run to rosin. We have everything we need. We have a dope bubble hash set up from Ethergreen, and we also have a rosin press that has been sitting dormant as a backdrop for a while. So we're gonna get things started back up on some concentrates for sure. Of course, I do love my flower, so the majority will be kept, but the two plants on the end and also the trim, of course, can be repurposed. And we'll do that all together, of course, so make sure you hit that sub button. 
All right, these ladies are doing well. There's really not much else we can do in here, but the 4x4 tent has just reached day 21. So we're gonna get a much needed heavy default done in there. We also need to move the light up a little bit because these plants just don't stop stretching ever. The node spacing on this one does look a little bit better in some places at least. We are under a different light spectrum and this tent is running a little bit warmer. We have also dialed in the nutrients, so hopefully this one will be even better than the other side. I did have to struggle to relocate that fan a little bit, but I got a few more inches out of the light, which is all that matters. And I also have been super cropping some of the tallest branches in here, just to try to keep things under control, I guess. So for the default, I'm just going to start in the front, work my way inward. I'm really focusing on the lowers and middle sections because that's where things are most packed. The tent is just so hard to work with because it doesn't have any side windows for whatever reason. I get it is a smaller tent, but I don't have a four foot arm to reach in the back, so I actually need to get pretty creative in here. The system also takes up the entire floor space, so it's even hard to get underneath. That's why this was designed for a veg area, so it won't be too bad after this run is over and we get back to the perpetual setup. Which I am really excited for because we'll be able to harvest every two-ish months. Otherwise, I run out and that's never a good thing. If I had to guess, I would say there's probably close to about two and a half to maybe three pounds in here. I know the nugs don't look that huge, but they are all super dense and there's a lot in here. A lot has fallen over already, so it looks like there's less than there really is. We will do a full final wait for everything once we chop, so make sure to stay tuned for that. The last thing I will probably do in here the day before chop is just a foliage cleanup to make things a little bit easier when the chop time does come. It won't really affect the plants too much, it just makes my life a bit easier because once we go to hang dry, I like to have mostly all of the fan leaves gone, it's just a lot cleaner. This run we are going to be trying a new automatic trimmer. I'm pretty excited to see how that goes. I'm actually praying that thing works well so we never have to trim again. That would be ideal. So I think I've come to the conclusion that part of the reason the plants on the end didn't do as well is because of this Mars Hydro LED. I think it's giving off a lot of heat and it's giving the plants heat stress which can be a big cause for foxtailing. Foxtailing in cannabis is primarily caused by excessive light intensity or high temperatures, which can stress the plants out and lead to abnormal bud growth, forming long, spiky foxtails instead of dense, compact nugs. Here are the main causes of foxtailing. So number one would be high light intensity. When the lights are too close to the canopy or are overly powerful, they can cause buds to stretch in an effort to escape the intense light. Number two is heat stress, temperatures above 80 to 85 degrees, especially when combined with high light intensity, can increase the chances of foxtailing. And then number three is genetic. Some strains are naturally more prone to foxtailing due to their genetic makeup, particularly certain sativa dominant strains that tend to grow less dense buds. It definitely wasn't an excessive light thing, and I run this room pretty cool, but if the LED was putting off a ton of heat, that could be the reason some of the tops on this side are so foxtailed. Sometimes when you have a problem in a run, it's actually a good thing because it gets you thinking about why or how something like that could have happened. It is important to remember that genetics do play a part, but still, I always like to try and dissect things. That's why it's going to be good to see the 4x4 run play out. There's a few things that are different like temperature, nutrient strength, LED spectrum is a big one. So we'll be able to see what differences that makes in the long run. But alright boys, that is pretty much it for this one. We probably won't have an update for these girls next week because they will be cut and drying. So we'll figure something else out. I'm going to group the entire chop, dry, harvest, final weight into one video, so stay tuned for that. Stay up, stay high, and I'll see you guys soon.